Hey YouTube, this is Lefty224 and I'm going to do a review on the White Queen. This is uh, episode 7 and the title of the episode was called Poison and Monzi Wine. I think that's how you pronounce it. I hope so. Um, so this episode was pretty good. It's really about just George and his sort of madness and his obsession with Elizabeth and her witchcraft and sort of his, um, I don't know, his own obsession with trying to have a title, have something of his own of worth, right? So we see at the beginning of this episode that he really wants an, another title. He feels that Richard has all these titles and Edward is the king and he has nothing, right? Sort of that middle child syndrome kind of coming out. Um, even though his mother loves him the best, which I find so interesting about it, you know. He's so obsessed with having this title, this title, this title. But his mother loves him the best out of all three of them. You can tell everyone knows it. And I think whatever she would have had whenever she would have died he would have gotten it all um but whatever that's another story um so they're ch he's he's trying to um get something of his own so what he comes up with is that uh edward needs a legacy he needs a legacy and that legacy would be um them reclaiming france so if they reclaimed france then uh, George wanted to be the regent in France. Edward agrees. They campaign to France. Uh, when they get to France, uh, Edward goes back on his word and he makes a deal with the king of France. Uh, and that deal sort of entails that um, his eldest daughter and the king of France's eldest son would be married, making um, the younger Elizabeth the queen of France and also Edward got gold out of the deal so he's not going to pass that up and he did promise um, the kingdom more peace he did so this is him sort of keeping his word to the people um, uh, so that's what he did and it did not go over very well with either of his brothers um, his brother Richard felt lied to uh, and sort of betrayed and then of course George felt betrayed by it so that was the end of that and that was the beginning of um, Richard sort of not being on his side anymore and then George just basically full out declaring war on Elizabeth because he believes that this whole thing is by Elizabeth, by Elizabeth's um, witchcraft and by her just being there, her just being alive is an issue. So one of the things that he does is um, he kills the dog and he believes that poison was the reason. He believes, like he does one thing but then he believes the, the next, you know. It, it, his actions were basically caused by Elizabeth type of thing. He's just nuts. I mean, you, when you watch it, it makes you laugh because you just see how crazy he actually is. And it makes you wonder if he was that bad um, in his time period. Or at least it made me wonder if he was that bad in his time period. It makes, it, I, just, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, he just basically called war on her. You know, he did the sign on her, you know, witch, witch, you're a witch, um, sort of thing. And he just went after her, you know, saying to everyone and anyone throughout the court that she was, uh, she's been practicing witchcraft, um, that basically that she was the reason that his wife died, you know, his wife didn't die from childbed fever, no, she was killed by Elizabeth who was miles and miles away, whatever, um, so, I don't know, he just went after her, and another way that he went after her, or to sort of what he what did he say to protect himself against her was to get a sorcerer of his own and to um sort of find out what sh what was going to happen before it did so he wanted the predictions of the future and so one of the things that he asked is when the king was going to die because they knew that whenever the king would die would be the day that elizabeth was no longer safe so um he has the sorcerer uh, he has a sorcerer predict basically Edward and Elizabeth's entire future. Um, and that's basically his, his downfall. To, pre 
to sort of think about the king's death is treason. It was treason back then, um, and to sort of plot, to definitely to plot the king's death was treason, but to sort of, to even think about the king's death was treason back then, you know, to sort of even say, I think he's going to die. Like, you know, if the king was dying and then you would say, hey, I think he's going to die tomorrow, that was considered treason. So, you know, he basically, you know, is imprisoned and he's found guilty of treason. Uh, but the, I, I don't know, the thing that surprised me about that is that he did not, uh, George, during his trial, he didn't have a defense. I thought that that was really, really interesting. Did anyone else find it interesting? Only because he is a royal. He's a royal duke, and he has no defense. I just thought, I found that was very odd. And the fact that he chose his death to be by drowning. You would think that he would choose his death by, you know, what, hanging, you know, beheading, something um, of his station to be, I don't know, to die by drowning was sort of a, like a, some, for someone of a lower status, not someone of his status. He was still a duke. He's still a duke. Um, so what the deuce? I mean, that was really weird. And I also, I thought that I read somewhere, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that I read somewhere that the Duke was found in a weird position, like his head was over his legs um, near a bottle of the wine, near a bottle of the, the Malmsey wine. So the fact that he, that in the show, they had him choose um, to be drowned in the wine, I thought was kind of funny. It's like they're, you know, they're sort of playing with the history of it, which is fine. Hey, he's dead. That's what was supposed to happen. So it's, it's just interesting how they chose to let him go. Um, and the fact that he sort of thought that he was going to be saved because every time before, you know, Edward never really let anything happen to either of his brothers. But we saw how serious he was when his mother sort of, like, you know, you know, went down on her hands and knees. She, like, you know, basically was prostrate in front of them and said, hey, um, you know, I don't kill him. You know, I can't let you kill him. You're, you know, I'm your mother and you will do what I say. You know, you will listen to me. And Edward just had none of it. He just walked right around her and, you know, she basically latched onto his, um, his leg and he basically, he, it was so, it's not funny, but it was funny to me. He like pulled her with him. He's like, uh-uh, you know, I'm getting out of here and he's going to die. You're not going to change my mind. So that was pretty good. You know, in all the episodes before, we saw him, you know, doing everything that he could to sort of protect his brothers. But at this point, he's just, I don't know, he's just had enough. He's done protecting them and he's done watching out for everything um, that they have done, you know, sort of watching, seeing what's happening, and then to forgive them later. Um, wow, that was pretty good. It was kind of nice to see him finally take charge of his throne and say, hey, you know, you're done for. Bye-bye. Um, what else happened in this one? This one also had the Elizabeth and Lady Margaret relationship, um, them sort of having an understanding and um, them sort of trusting each other just a little bit. Um, I think Elizabeth trusts Margaret more, obviously, because we know Margaret is playing both sides. Uh, but Elizabeth believes that Margaret saved her son. Uh, so what happens with that? She comes to be her confidant. Um, Margaret gives secrets to, um, gives the courtiers secrets to Elizabeth, tells her what's going on, and, uh, Elizabeth turns to Margaret for advice, for, um, for spiritual counsel, you know, she says, how do you forgive someone for their past deeds, and, you know, they pray together, and all that, uh, but Elizabeth is pretty, I don't know, she's pretty forgiving in this episode. You know, before we see her like, you know, eh, you know, hey, I'm going to kill all of you bitches type of thing. <laughs> but in this episode, she's like, okay, maybe I should forgive him. And she she basically tells um, Edward not to kill, um, not to kill uh, George and that he should forgive him if George, George agrees 
to um, apologize for everything that happened, you know. Um, but Edward says no. So that was sort of interesting to see that now, now that Edward has changed his mind, that Elizabeth goes, no, maybe we should do it the way that you've always done it. And he says, uh-uh. And we see also this episode that Elizabeth is the one that um, convinces Edward to give uh, Henry Tudor his title back. So he gets his title back of uh, Earl of Richmond after the death of George. So that was pretty good. And we see how uh, the Earl of Richmond comes back in this next episode. So this one was pretty good. Better than all the rest. I really also, I'm so happy. Thank you, show. Thank you, stars. And thank you, um, ugh, White Queen, for putting the title up at the beginning that just said one year later. Thank you so much. Because I tell you, you guys were jumping around so much. It was hard for me to keep up with you I was just so confused so thank you for putting one year later and so I could finally figure out what the hell was going on and what time period we were actually in um so I really like this one uh it was nice to see Edward finally be like uh -uh. no 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 you got to go um and I really liked the relationship between uh Richard and Anne and Elizabeth and Margaret so I hope we get to see a little more of that in the next episode Thank you for watching. Tell me what you think. See ya.